this is a video on testing vehicle voltage uh, also testing your vehicle alternator and testing for power drains if you look at my other videos that I have on YouTube I have basic introduction to multimeters uh, analog multimeters as well as digital multimeters and the differences between the two I also have videos on testing for voltage uh, testing for ohms and testing for continuity I will be adding more videos down the road on more basic functions with multimeters as well as some advanced functions. If you need to get in touch with me, you can leave me a message here on YouTube or you can find me on SaturnFans.com under the username of Campus189. First thing we're going to do is measure voltage on this Toyota pickup truck. In order to do that, we put our multimeter on the voltage scale as indicated by the purple arrow. Once you've done that, you want to take your red probe, your, that's your positive probe, indicated by the red arrows, and you want to connect one of the alligator clips to that red probe and the other one to the positive side of the battery terminal. On your negative probe coming from your multimeter, you want to connect that to one end of your alligator clip, that's why I used a black one here, and the other end to the negative post on your battery terminal. Then you want to read your reading here which you see 12.71 volts. That is giving your battery voltage. Real simple. Now we've started our vehicle up. We're checking for alternator output. As you can see we've gone from 12 volts up to almost 14 and a half volts. That's just by starting the vehicle. This is why we're using alligator clips. Uh, it makes it easier for me to do the videos as well. Um, as you can see, the alternator is working. We're putting out 14 volts, and that's how you test your alternator. Real simple. Now, using the same method, here we're testing a 1999 Chevy Blazer. If you notice, we're at 12.81 volts. That's without the vehicle running, and the probes are connected exactly like they were in the previous video. Now, if we start our vehicle up, if you notice, we've got 14.25 volts. If you were to bring the idle up slightly, that voltage will go a little bit higher. That tells you that your alternator is working, and it is working properly. That's how you do a 99 Chevy Blazer and uh, this happens to be a side post with this different terminals on it but the basic concept is pretty much the same now this happens to be a 97 Saturn just like the other vehicles everything is connected the same make sure your voltage meter is on voltage and your negative battery terminal is connected to your negative probe going to your multimeter and your positive terminal on your battery is connected to your alligator clip and also connected to your positive probe on your multimeter. And as you can see, we've got a reading of 12.82 volts. Now, if we start our car, if you notice, we have 14.24 volts. That means our alternator is actually charging. So that's a good sign. That's how you check the alternator on a 99 Saturn. Like I said, these are all pretty much the same, all these vehicles. Now we're going to learn how to test a car battery for drains. If your car battery is dying, there are a number of things that could be going wrong. One is that a bad component is drawing more power than it should be drawing. To narrow this down, pull each fuse one at a time. Look at your vehicle's fuse diagram to find out what each fuse is. To check the draw with the part out, hook up your amp meter or voltmeter, multimeter, checking for current in between the negative battery terminal and the negative cable. You'll get a very small amount of amps on the milliamp setting, 25 to 50 milliamps. This is because of the components like the radio, the clock, the computer that keep the small current to them to retain a memory. With all the doors closed, you should be getting between 25 to 50 milliamps between the negative cable and the negative terminal. This, of course, varies according to the vehicle being tested. If you still have a higher than normal amperage reading, then you've found your problem. To find the culprit, remove one fuse at a time until the extra amperage disappears. Once the amperage is gone, check the service manual or the fuse panel to find all the components connected to this fuse. Now reinstall the fuse and try to disconnect 
each of the components connected to that fuse one at a time until the problem goes away. When it does, you have found your problem. If you have removed all the fuses and the amperage is still there, then you may have a shorted wire somewhere or a loose ground. You could also have a high resistance on a wire that is holding on by a strand. The low strand amount of the wire with the high current creates a high resistance which acts like a load and will eventually drain your battery. You will need to painstakingly check all the wires and the connections for insulation damage, excessive kinking or extreme corrosion. Checking for a drain can be time consuming and frustrating but taking the time to find it will save time and money in the long run. Have fun and be safe as always. If everything looks good to you, then it's time to check the battery itself. Do this by taking the vehicle to an auto parts store. They'll test your battery and your alternator at the same time for free. Now if you notice in this picture I have everything disconnected. That's because we're going to be checking our amperage. So I don't want anything uh, connected to the vehicle like it was before or you'll get confused obviously. As a refresher, your red is your positive and your black is your negative. Okay, in this picture it looks real confusing. We have a lot of wires. It's actually not. All you need to do is disconnect your negative battery terminal and that's it. It's that simple you leave the positive on don't mess with it take your multimeter and you're gonna put the multimeter in the amps position it'll be A it'll say A on it not MA you want A it's highlighted by the yellow arrow here I know you can barely see it but it is on amps the other way to confirm it's on amps is if you look at the purple arrow it'll have an A as well the first thing you want to do is you want to take your multimeter and take your positive lead, that's the red one that's coming off the multimeter, and you want to put that to one of your alligator clips. You want to take the other alligator clip, the other end of it, and you want to hook that to your battery. Then you're going to take the negative terminal that's coming off of your multimeter, that's the black one, and you're actually going to connect that to another alligator clip, which you can see marked by the black arrow that's connected to an alligator clip that happens to be black and then the other end of that is going to be going to a vehicle ground now there's multiple grounds that you can use I use the strut mount ground right here as you can see now this vehicle has no electricity being used at all is as you can see <clears throat> it's using 0 0.037 amps um, usually, like we discussed earlier in this, uh, that has to do with a clock or a key chime or anything like that, uh, or the computer itself. So it's barely drawing any amperage at all right now. Uh, a good example, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to put the interior light on and show you what the difference is in just a second here. Now I put the interior light on. If you notice, now it's changed. It's at 0.126 now this means that you have an amperage drain now normally if you get an amperage drain like this you need to be concerned about it um, uh, the most common problems that you're going to run into is if you have a draw like this is it's going to be an interior light or it's going to be a trunk light or if you've got a vehicle that actually has a light under the hood that's malfunctioning the switch this is where you're going to get your draw so this is an example of a draw, amperage draw. Now if you look at this example, we're drawing even more amperage. I've turned the interior light on and I've opened up the trunk of this vehicle in order to make the trunk light come on. Now this is almost one amp. This will drain your battery real quick. Again, this is an example. Okay, we happen to be looking at a fuse panel diagram this happens to be a fuse panel that is actually underneath the hood of the car some vehicles will have them under the hood of the car others will have them on the inside of the car um, and they could have both so either or so you need to look at your service manual and that will help you locate where they're at again as we discussed earlier what you're going to have to do is pull these fuses one by one unfortunately until your voltage drain goes down. You may have more than one voltage drain and the best way to find out and I hate to say this you'll have to get a Chilton's manual because it'll tell you what fuse 
operates what component. Again, this is the interior fuse panel diagram. And like I said before, you're going to have to actually pull one of these one by one. You may get them the first shot, but then again, you may not. The best thing to do is get yourself a Chilton's service manual or some other kind of service manual that will tell you what fuse is connected to what components. And that's just about it. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, bitch, moans, gripes, complaints, whatever, uh, more than welcome to hear them. Uh, hopefully I didn't piss off too many people. I got a new video editor, as you can uh, tell. I'm stepping up as time goes on. And like I said, hopefully uh, y'all didn't get upset too bad with all the music in the background and all of that.